What's up? Welcome to Backend Stuff. I'm Jacob Blitzo. Today we are going to use plug to protect specific functions in our controllers for just a little extra control, kind of like middleware in the Node.js Express world. Plugs can be invoked with certain actions. So for instance, if the update function was being called, we could invoke a plug to be called before the function is actually called. We are going to check our current session with the account object we want to update to make sure the authenticated user can actually update the account they are trying. Let's just jump right in and open up the Real Deal API project. And let's expand the lib directory, Real Deal API web, controllers, and then let's open our account controller. We are going to add a private function above the index function that takes the connection struct and options if you need them. Both these parameters are required to function as a plug. We only need access to our connection structs, so we'll put an underscore in front of the options. So right here, let's just go ahead and give us some space. And we're just going to do a def p because this is a private function. And then we're going to call it is underscore authorized underscore account. And then it needs to take a con struct and then op, an options parameter but we're, we're not going to use it so just do an underscore options and then do end now we need to parse our account object from the connection struct and we can do that with pattern matching we just need to do a percent opening curly brace and now the connection struct has a params nested inside that is where we'll find our account information from our request. So just do another percent opening curly brace and then in quotations, type in account lowercase, close those quotations. And then we're going to go ahead and set that object to a variable called params. And then go ahead and close off these curly braces. And now we just have to say equals Con. So now through pattern matching, we'll be able to pull out the account object from our request. So now that we have access to our account from our request, I like to just grab the account ID and then fetch the account object from our database because when the account is being updated, we might not have the full object because you can just pass in one. Like if we're just changing our password, we would just be updating the hash password. If we want to grab our account, we can do account equals and then accounts, our context accounts file, and then get account by ID. And then we can pull out the account ID from the params variable we just created. So if we do params and then opening square brace and then a quotation marks ID, which is the key of our ID. And now this will fetch our account object with the ID that we're trying to update. All we need to do now is check that our session account ID matches the account we're trying to update. So we can just do that with an if statement. So if, if you remember in the last video, we did sessions and we saved an account object. And the way you access that is con dot assigns.account and we just care about the ID. So now we can just do dot ID and we wanna just make sure it equals the account we just fetched. We're grabbing this struct and we're going to do account dot ID. So if that is true, we just want to pass through the connection struct. If that's not true, it means the, the user trying to update that their session does not match the account ID, so they do not have access. So we wanna throw an error and we want to create a forbidden error. So let's pull up our expand our auth directory and then our error response. We want to open that. And if you remember, we have an unauthorized that we've made there before. We're going to make a new module. So def module, real deal, API web dot auth dot error response. And then we're going to call this one dot forbidden. Inside of this, we're just going to do our exception. So def exception. And then we're going to do message colon. And then here we can just type in, uh, you do not have access to this resource. All right, period, quotations, and then comma, and then the plug status like above, but with a 403 instead of a 401. So plug underscore status colon 403. And then close that square brace and now we can raise this error. So save this file 
Let's go back to our account controller and underneath con, let's do an else. And then we can just do raise air response dot forbidden. And there we go. Now we are handling our error. How do we use this plug that we just created? We're passing in the connection struct. It will pull out the ID and fetch an up-to-date account from our database. And then it checks with the session. So how do we call this? Like if we want this to only be called on the update function, we can just go ahead and go, it doesn't really matter. Just put it up here. I usually like it under aliases and above the action fallback. Um, and we just do plug. I'm going to do an extra return though. Whoops. Right like that. Okay. So plug and then a colon and then just the name of our function. So it is underscore authorized underscore account. And now how you invoke an action, we're going to type in when action in, and then we can do an opening square brace. And now you can list all the functions you want this plug to be called um, before it actually gets passed into the function. So in our case, we're going to colon update. So that's our update function. And then another one just to be safe, because we're making sure this current session is actually the owner of its data, we can do delete too. So we're not going to let a user, another user delete your account information. So now every time update or delete gets called, so here's our update function and here's our delete, it is going to go through our is authorized account plug first, which I think is pretty dang cool. There is one tweak we need to do on our update function that I don't wanna forget about. Oh, let's also our show function we got to return that back to the way it was. We were just testing the session object before. So we're going to return account again in our show function. But now down here in update, we don't have, we're not going to have two parameters. We're going to have an account struct come in, but we're not going to have an ID separate. We'll have the ID within our account. So we're just going to delete this the ID pattern matching there. And then um, coming inside the get account, delete ID and we have to do account underscore params and then opening square bracket. And then we're just going to do in quotations ID. And so now that will grab the ID from our account struct in our request. Now, all we have to do is add an endpoint to update our account. So let's open up our router.ex file. We want to cr create a protected endpoint. So if a user is not authenticated or logged in, they do not have access to this endpoint. And so we're going to do right under here where we're piping through the auth one. And then obviously up here are our unprotected endpoints. And this is going to be a post. So post and then opening quotations forward slash accounts forward slash update. All right, and then close those quotations, comma, and then we wanna call our account controller, comma, and then the function we're calling is colon update. And then let's go ahead and delete the alias that automatically got created up here because it's already getting imported through the real deal API file. All right, so once this post is written, go ahead and save it. And now we can test to see if this endpoint works and if uh, our plug will actually restrict a different user from updating this information. So let's go ahead and pull up our terminal and you need a CD into the directory of this project. Mine is in documents, develop, BS and then the real deal API and let's just spin it up. So mix PHX dot server and this will spin up our server for us. And now we're running on localhost 4000. Oh, if you get an error, um, we forgot, always double check to make sure your database, your Docker container is running. Mine is, if it's not press play. And if you got an error, just uh, run 
the Phoenix server command again, and it will spin right up. Now, let's open up hopscotch.io, and we need to sign in. And if you remember, we just have our API forward slash account sign in, and it takes a body, so our email. I'm gonna sign in with client2 at realdealapi.com, and the password is real underscore password. So I'm going to do that. And there we go. I have an authentication token that I can now copy. All right, and now we're going to make a new request called account update. All right, and we're on it. And then all we have to do is make sure it's a post and it is. And then right here is going to be update. So we have localhost colon 4000 as our port forward slash API forward slash accounts forward slash update, okay? And then what we need to do is we need to make it very similar to our create account endpoint or our uh, create account request body. So I'm gonna save it so it doesn't forget what we did. Account update, save. Okay, now if we go to create account, we have an account struct here, right? With our email, everything we needed to create an account and a user. I'm gonna just copy this body and then we're going to go to our account update and just delete what's there. When we're updating, you actually don't need to send in the full object. So if we only change one thing, our change set is only gonna update the one thing, okay? So it won't wipe out everything else. So I'm gonna delete email. I'm gonna delete full name because we're not updating our user either. We're just going to worry about updating our password, okay? One thing we do need to add though is we always need to include the account ID that we're updating so we can find that object to update it. And then also our plug is going to be referencing against that account ID as well. So let's go ahead and do ID in quotations colon and then we're going to put an ID in there, comma. Our current ID is right here. So this is our user ID. I'm gonna copy and paste that between my quotation marks. And now if I update this, it should update my password. So if I go ahead and, I don't know, real password, I'm gonna say fake password, and then go ahead and send the request. And it says I'm unauthenticated. And that is actually, because I'm gonna save it again, we forgot to add the authentication header. So we have to actually do authorization. And then we have to put our bearer token in right here. And that we got from our sign in. All right, I'm just gonna sign in again. And we gotta grab this token. All right, copy that without the quotation marks and then go back to our update and then bear space paste our token and now if we hit send it updated our password so everything we got a status 200 everything is good to go now if we sign in uh, i'm going to just save if we sign in again with the same the real password we should get uh email or password is incorrect so that's pretty cool so now if i change this to fake and sign in there we go we're authenticated again now we need to test our current session is client2 at real deal api that's the current account what if we want to update client one's account it should say we don't have um i forgot what our error was let me just look oh yeah it should give us our forbidden error and it should say we don't have access to this resource. All right, so that's really cool. Let's go back to Hopscotch. And if we go back to our update, our back to our update account, and I'm currently logged in as client two, right? And this is the client two's ID. But if I grab client one's ID, I have it just copied over here. And you can find this in your database and we'll, we can go over how you can fetch data in another video. But here's client one's ID, and I want to change their password to um, not there. 
not their password. Okay, and now if I hit send, I should get our 403 forbidden error. There we go. So 403 forbidden, and we get an, our, our error message that we wrote in there. You do not have access to this resource. So that's pretty cool. That's how you can use plugs with actions. And now you can kind of see why I call it middleware, because it is in between the endpoint and the function you are calling. And it's just an extra um, line of defense because you don't want any authenticated user to be able to delete another user's account or to update information on them. So there we don't have permissions to change another account's password. As always, if you need help or want to check out the solutions, check out that GitHub link in the description. And if you have more questions or just want to hang out and chat, join my Discord server back in stuff. That link is also in the description. If you want to learn how to build scalable, production-ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. See you next time.